You can start. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, everyone from all across the world, welcome to our conference today. And we're really honored to have you all here. And uh, I would love to welcome Honorable Professor Dr. Charles Afurie to take over from here. Thank you very much. Professor Charles, are you here? Can you take over? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and good night. I appreciate God for today that God has given me feel for us to be here. This is another day. I give glory to our able and amiable founder, Advocate Sir Pish Bandit, for the good work he has been giving to us. He has been giving us this opportunity and we have been using it. We give glory to him and the team of IU. I bless God for today for all our excellencies that are here, the speakers and the moderator for this great opportunity. Today, we are going to talk of immigration inside and outside Africa, the benefits and the consequences. As we all know, immigration is the process of coming to live permanently in a country that is not your own. Some people move in search of work or economic opportunity to join family or to study. Others move to escape conflict, persecution, of a large-scale human rights violation. Still, other move in response to the adverse effects of climate change, natural disaster, and other environmental factors. Those who migrate are often the youth, leading to high school dropouts, loss of labor, and averagely illiterate groups from rural communities. This leads to increased pressure on infrastructural facilities like housing, water supply, etc. Poverty and the growth of human slums. Problem with immigration in Africa. Immigration being with its many complex challenges, says UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. The issue includes human rights, economic opportunity, labor shortage, and unemployment. The main dream multiculturalism and integration, flows of refugees and alumnus seekers. The main effect of migration at the most basic level, migration increases the supply of labor in the economy. More labor, more goods and services being produced so that natural output, the GDP, increase. Immigra immigration also affect the prices of the inputs that are used to produce these goods and services. Benefit and problem of immigration. Economically, those in favor of immigration argue that immigrants boost the economy by increasing the labor supply and promoting innovation. Those against argue that Im immigrants arm low-skilled laborers by taking jobs that American workers would otherwise get or depriving wages for native-born, low-skilled workers. People move from one place to the other for various reasons. War, persecution, seeking better opportunity, unemployment, etc. These Im immigrants or immigration of people can result in consequences for both the place they left behind and their new place of residence. Those consequences can be economic, social, political, and demographic. The biggest causes of immigration, high wages, better employment opportunity, a high standard of living and educational opportunity, Note, if economic conditions are not favorable, they are going to be at risk of declining further. A great number of people will probably immigrate to countries with a better outlook. What happened to immigration and the push factor of immigration? At immigration counters, e.g., in Indian airports, the queue is, us is usually long. At the container or the counter, 
an officer will be verifying the passenger's passport and visa and might ask a few questions about the end destination. The push factor may include conflicts, grant, famine, lack of job, and discrimination. What knowing that push factor, push factors are those factors in destination country that attract the individual or the group to leave their homes, e.g. better economic opportunity, more job, and the promises of a better life often pull people into new locations. Note, when you come, when you come in in a new country for a while, you are bound to face the following five stages of immigration. What are the five stages? We have the excitement stage, we have the frustration stage, we have the adjustment stage, we have the acceptance stage, and we have the reverse culture shock stage. What are the basic principles of immigration? One, respect for the principle of liberty. Two, democracy, respect for human rights and fundamental freedom and rule of law. What are the advantages of immigration? One, it increased economic growth. Two, more flexible labor markets. Three, full fields job vacancy and unpopular jobs. Provides key workers such as nurses, doctors, and teachers. Potential entrepreneur. Working age migrate provides net benefit to government budgets, a solution to an agency population, and a greater cultural diversity. What are the disadvantages of migration? Potential fall in real wages, especially for low skilled native workers. Increased pressure on public service like health, education, and conjunction on roads. Overpopulation could increase cost of housing and renting. Impact on real GDP per capita can be negative. Social disharmony from rapid immigration. Economic growth. Immigrants often contribute to the economy by filling a labor shortage and starting new businesses. Cultural diversity. Immigration can enrich a society by bringing in new perspectives, traditions, and ideas. Locals are curious and want to know about life in one's country. Innovation and creativity. Immigrants can bring new skills, knowledge, and innovation to their new country. You can start a new life, a new career, a new relationship, a new hobbies. You learn things that didn't even know existed before. You feel like a tourist for a few years with so many new needs, places to discover. When you look at the disadvantage of migration, you look at job competition, you look at the strain on resources. Large members of migrants can strain public services such as healthcare, education, and housing. What knowing that massive migration stagnates wages and increased living costs. It is not easy for it is not easy to be far away from family and friends. A new language means a new you communicating. You don't have a local work experience. So you have to start from zero points. You will miss some little things that had your whole life that you had in your whole life, like a TV, television, a TV show, like festival, like this, like cookies. Note that the US citizenship and migration services is responsible for processing immigration and nationalization application and establishing policies regarding immigration services. NIS, Nigeria Immigration Services is the government agency that has been charged with the responsibility of migration management in Nigeria. Over the years, the NIC has witnessed a series of changes since it has extracted from the Nigeria Police Force, MPL, in 1958. Between 1886 and 1924, almost 14 million immigrants entered the United States through New York. The Statutes of Liberty was 
a reassuring sign that they had arrived in the land of their dream. Green card in immigration means a green card owner is a permanent resident that has been granted authorization to live and work in the United States in a permanent basis. As proof of that state, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, grant a person a permanent residence card, commonly known as a green card. It will interest us to know that Canada is a geographically huge country with a spare population, illegal immigration can be controlled. The entrance of poorly educated family members and low-skilled workers can be limited. It will also interest us to know that the immigrant to Kazakhstan enjoys the following. Strong economy, a robust economy, and low cost of living, allowing you to save more and enhance your lifestyle. And also friendly people they have there, and also diverse culture. The government supports them very well. And when we look at uh, Singapore, we enjoy convenient meals which are healthy. The government officials are educated, they are, poli they, they are polite, they are accommodating, and they are helpful. They have the best passport for visa-free travel. Singapore has the lowest crime rate and drug-free environment and interreligious conflict are absent. The USA gives you a chance to be whatever you want. Relatively, there is a tendency to help those who want to succeed and get ahead. If you are respectful, most people will respect you back, even if you are a foreigner. A downside is many sovereignly people see you as a threat. There is a prejudice all over the world and in USA. They bull, they also because of your look, your language, and religion. It will also interest us to note why immigra immigration is bad. Immigration is not bad. Illegal immigration is bad. Uncontrolled legal immigration is bad. Control and sustainable legal immigration of people who want to integrate and contribute is good. Only immigrants who share the secular value of the host country and willing to contribute positively should be accepted. We should tell immigrants who want to impose holier than thou satiric value to anyone else to stay home and go to a country that suits their view. Living in Z a New Zealand, they have high standard of living and strong healthcare system, strong economy and and a job opportunity in the field such as techno technology, agriculture, ag agriculture and tourism. They also have progressive and social conscious society, low crime rates and a safe and welcome community. They have beautiful natural scenery and outdoor activities such as the water sport, the heat play, and the stealing. But they have limited job opportunity in certain field and industry, high cost of living, isolation from other major international cities and long travel. It will interest us also to know that the United Nations is a country built in migrants. The different concepts and culture provide a very versatile diversified experience for people. The downside in the United States is that you might have people that cannot integrate well into the system. It will interest us also to know that having a high number of immigrants is, it will bring about economic growth and land development. It will also interest us to know that the velocity of money, which create new business, new job, and a growing economy, there will also be a higher birth rate, more highly motivated risk taker and lower crime. But there will be moderate social unrest by the native born citizen, time and displacement of new born and citizen. I need to end here to give room for others to speak their mind concerning this. This is a very good topic. We need to thank God for this great opportunity that God has given us. Maybe at the end of the period are now coming. It is a very good topic. And I pray that God 
We give us the grace to give justice to it. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. Thank you very much, Professor Charles Abifuria, the Vice Chancellor of IAE. Uh, I would like to welcome you other. Uh, we'll go to church. Hello. Thank you very much, Professor Charles, for the fruitful discussion and the uh, impactful words that you have given right now. I'd like to welcome other speakers on board. Um, Professor Ravinda. Professor Ravinda. Yes. Yes, uh, Fatima, I'm around. You want me to speak? Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, uh, colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, good uh, morning also. Uh, it's indeed always uh, a great pleasure to be part of this particular uh, virtual conference organized by the Africa team of IAU. And I would like to thank the uh, conference organizer, particularly Sir uh, Charles, and all of our moderators, Fatima, and our uh, other colleagues from Togo, from Algeria, and so on. Indeed, the topic that was chosen today is very, very important for all of us to understand the technical, as well as the social, political, and cultural side of, economic side of the story of our brothers and sisters. Well, uh, uh, today is 23rd of uh, March uh, 2024. It has got a great significance, actually, very important today. We just celebrated uh, in South Africa a couple of days ago. On uh, 21st, uh, we celebrated the uh, African uh, Women, Women uh, Human Rights Day, actually. So in that context, uh, this particular topic become more important. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the interest of time, as the head of the South African um, uh, the director of the South Africa IAU. I always take the privilege and the honor to speak few words uh, in this particular forum, uh, representing not only South Africa, but also the African continent. Uh, I have got a few important insights that I'd like to share for time, maybe we speak in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I would like to understand the dynamics of this issue here. Yeah. The migration inside and outside of Africa, and uh, what are the problems and prospects? So, if you look at the uh, the entire migration process, uh, uh, is uh, is the recording is going on or uh, is it stopped? Doesn't matter. Um, so, what is the signif significance of this uh, migration, ladies and gentlemen? The actual migration and the human race that we look at today the 8.1 billion people, we're all Africans. Whether you like it or not, whether we look brown or white or brown, pink or whichever the color we look, but we are all African because our roots were coming from Africa. If you look at the population, probably about uh, 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and uh, all the history of the anthropology you go back, and you try to understand uh, the dynamics of the human evolution, on what basis we try to evaluate and we look like what we are today. So the Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, that was the origin of Africa, where the people particularly from, um, we have the people from Ethiopia, and we also got people from South Africa, people from Morocco. So these are the three countries uh, which has got the, uh, the original and the foster human beings that have been living in that particular areas. So that is the part of migration. So migration has been started not recently, but the past uh, one decade or two decades, but it has been uh, migrated historically. And uh, the population that we see today has been spread across the globe. We all come from African soil. For example, if you look at Indian scenario, India about 65,000 years ago, a majority of the people migrated from African continent. So in the evolution process, we look like Indians, we look like Asians, or we look like Europeans and we look like Americans and so on. 
but we are one people. And that people originally are originated from Africa itself. This is the first point I would like to mention. The second point, why do we migrate actually? What is the importance of being migrated? So when we say that uh, the migration takes place, basically, uh, that uh, maybe because of the employment reasons, maybe because of the greener pastures, maybe because of the uh, persecutions, the people are being persecuted, people are having hard time within their own places or within their own country of origin. So due to which they look for better opportunities and eventually people, they do go and migrate from time to time from the other places. So that is one of the things that one we has to keep in mind that uh, it could be economic reasons, it could be political reasons, it could be cultural reasons, it could be a number of other reasons. So people, they do migrate on a regular basis. Hundreds and thousands of Africans, they leave African continent on a regular basis. And uh, if we look at the, the accidents that are happening in Mediterranean Sea on a regular basis, there are thousands and thousands of uh, African brothers and sisters. They died in the Mediterranean Sea while they are crossing. When they are crossing from African continent to Europe or elsewhere, they wanted to go home. So in between, they lost their lives. So this is what is happening. This is the kind of inconvenience. So there are a lot of hardships that they pass through. There are, I was teaching in Eritrea, for example, a Northeastern African country for many years. And while more than a decade I worked there in Eritrea. And uh, many of my own students, many of my, probably the people that I know, they have to cross the border. They have to come to Sudan. And from Sudan in that uh, desert area, they have to walk. And the last lot of people, the Dunkalian Depression, actually. The Dunkalian Depression considered to be one of the dangerous uh, uh, areas in the whole world where the temperature is so hot. So in that kind of uh, you know areas, they travel, they pass through. Some of them, they die literally there itself without even passing through the next level. So these are the greater disadvantage and inconvenience that our people, they experience on a regular basis. So it's life-threatening, it's risky. The migration is not an easy process, unless and otherwise you got a, a job in Europe or maybe elsewhere in the world, or you got an employment, then you straightforward, you go for, by flight and uh, whichever the means, then you settle down and you try to work and contribute. That's a different scenario. But majority of our brothers and sisters from African continent, when they're migrating, they're absolutely passing through a lot of hardships. So in the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a lot to say and a lot to mention, but in the interest of time, there are other speakers as well. I'd like to say a few words that, uh, according to the latest statistics that we have, our migrants that are leaving African continent, they are spending about $41 billion money $41 billion, maybe for African uh, countries, it's a lot of money, actually. So the whole world, particularly for the migration, there are a lot of Indians, they work in USA, Europe, and other countries. A lot of Chinese people also work in Africa, South Africa, and Nigeria, and so on. If you look at the entire migrated population, so probably if we realistically look at the figures, so... $625 billion have been contributed by the migrant population. I'm not talking about Africa alone, but I'm talking about the general population living in different parts. From, they are from different countries in the world. They contribute about $625 billion. And when it comes to our continent, Africa, they contribute $41 billion, which is a significant amount of money. $41 billion, uh, we cannot undermine and underestimate the figures. So this is how, of course, the African people migrated to different countries. They do send money from time to time uh, to support their families, to support their relatives, and so on. So that is one uh, important point I'd like to share with you. Now, country like South Africa, we're uh, in the total 55 countries that we have in African continent. We have got um, uh, probably, I think the record has been passed, I don't know, is it deliberately paused or is it uh, technical reasons they paused? Uh, they just stopped the recording. I didn't understand why. Uh, probably, and Mina, can you just uh, try to look into that matter? So if it is deliberately, it's fine. Let us keep it. But if it is by mistake, uh, 
the recording is passed up, probably, I don't know whether you can switch it on or maybe I'll leave it like that. Irina, can you confirm with me, please? Irina? Yes, um, I'm not hearing you very well. Yeah, you can hear me, but the recording, uh, is it uh, paused or is it uh, having any problems? I can see that the pause button for the recording. That means that uh, my speech is not going to be recorded. Uh, I'm not recording. I'm not recording. Maybe someone. Yeah, okay. someone started. Someone started. Someone started. Okay. My record work. Yeah. That's fine. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, I was uh, sharing that uh, the information that I was sharing earlier is uh, $625 billion. That was the money that is coming from most of the immigrants all over the world. And when it comes to African continent, we have got $41 billion. So, we do have countries like USA, where it has received a large number of immigrant population in the old world. So uh, immigrants means most of us would love to go to America or Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. So America is the one which is hosting large number of uh, immigrant people in the old world. That's why number one I want to mention. Of course, we do have other countries as well, that uh, Turkey on the other side also receives a lot of uh, people particularly was coming as asylum seekers from Syria, from other disturbed countries. Turkey was also hosting a large number of uh, migrant population. Then we have Saudi Arabia too, will also hold a lot of other populations. So these are the dominant countries where they host a large number of country, uh, the, the people that are migrated for, by different reasons, which I'm not going to go to the details of it. So when it comes to the African continent, uh, our topic is about Africa. So the number one country that hosts large number of uh, uh, what do you call the migrants is none other than uh, our beloved country, South Africa, where I am working and where I am uh, also the country director of uh, the IAU. So South Africa hosts close to 3 million migrants, which is a lot of people. Actually, the population of South Africa is only 60 million. And out of 60 million, you are having 3 million population. That is probably a significant number any country can post. So that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I know that we have a lot of Somali people. We have a lot of Ethiopian people. We have a lot of people from DRC Congo. We have from Liberia. We have from almost all the countries, Burundi, Rwanda, you name any country, we have it in South Africa. So this is one of the a great contribution of South Africa to host the asylum seekers one side and the immigration population on the other side. Because I taught a lot of students from Zimbabwe, a lot of students from um, Nigeria, a lot of students from other African countries, Ghana as well. So we do have significant amount of population. Now the other African countries which are hosting the immigrant population is also Ghana one side and probably uh, Rwanda was also because been encouraged by Ivory Coast Rwanda and Ivory Coast is also hosting a lot of people, though they may have, according to UNHCR, United Nations uh, Human Rights uh, uh, Council or the migrant population related. So they do give some kind of encouragement or maybe some kind of financial support to host these uh, uh, migrant people. But uh, because UK also was doing the same thing, so they just want, don't want uh, the migrant people in those respective European countries they rather wanted to bring them to Africa and dump them here. That's what is happening. So in the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to share, but uh, migration, it has, it has got positive side effects. It has also got negative side effects. If you don't see migration is one of the important points. Now, Albert Einstein is also an, a migrant uh, who migrated from Germany and for, it's a life-threatening problem. He went to USA and he probably did a lot of research and he became a popular uh, you know, scientist. So all the greatest scientists that we see today in the world, they all, most of them, are migrated people, actually. So that is why, maybe because of a number of reasons, the migration is playing an important role in our personal lives, and also in the national lives, or in the also global economic situation. Without the migration, the world which we see today, the development that is occurring today would have been definitely impossible. So migration, it has got a lot of positive sides because migrant people, I migrated from India to African continent more than 
26, 27 years ago. So migrant people are always hardworking. They have a passion, they have a compassion, they got a lot of patience, they got a vision and mission. They do work hard than the local people themselves. That is why migrant people are more successful people also, ladies and gentlemen. Most of the rich people that you talk about, Elon Musk, have also migrated from South Africa to USA, and he became the richest man for many years. And now, of course, Bernard is coming in and out as the richest man in the world, but Elon Musk is always paying, even whatever the Jeb Bezos and all those people are also a migrant people, actually. So with these few words, I'd like to thank the uh, the conference organizers for uh, providing me this opportunity. And uh, probably we would like to listen to other fellow colleagues. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Charles and uh, Ermina and all the other uh, colleagues from IAU platform. Thank you, Varanda. Thank you, Sue. I'd love to welcome, um, first of all, thank you so much. The speech was really nice and it had very interesting things that probably most of us did not know about, especially for Africa. I would love to welcome Honorable Karishma to take on the floor next. And uh, thank you very much, Professor Dr. Ravinda from India, from South Africa, actually. Very much. Honorable Karishma? Okay. Yes, can you all hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, we, yes, I can hear you. I don't know about okay. the rest. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can yeah. hear everyone. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much, Fatima, first of all, for giving wonderful introduction about me and thank you for handling this platform. Uh, I would also thanks to the ma'am who is on Wonderful World for inviting me as and giving me opportunity to be a moderator. And special thanks to my honorable brother, Professor Dr. Charles Zeboria, uh, for having me on this platform. As well as I have yet now listened to the wonderful views of uh, my honorable brother Charles and uh, of Professor Ravindra Jena, and really appreciable views. Uh, now on this platform, without wasting time, I would also request all speakers to have little bit of time limit and uh, as much as possible with a little time limit, we shall express our views completely. And with this, I would request Dr. Emmanuel Ezekiel to please come forward for his views and, and for the wonderful topic of immigration inside and outside Africa, its advantages and inconveniences. So uh, over to you, Dr. Emmanuel Ezekiel. Uh, yes, we will turn on uh, you once. Okay. Okay. You will receive a request, Dr. Emmanuel. Uh, please unmute and uh, please start sharing your views with us. Yes, Dr. Emmanuel, please start sharing your views with us. If you can hear us, please start sharing your views with us. Okay. I think there's some technical problem on his side. Okay. Uh, till then, I would request uh, Dr. Augustine to uh, please come on this platform and express his views. Uh, we will fix the problem with Dr. Emmanuel Ezekiel. Till then, I would request Dr. Augustine to please come and express his views. Okay. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we have Dr. Emmanuel. I think my head is. My network is bad. My network is not good. Dr. Manu, 
Can you use? In fact, I'm having a low network. I think there is some connection problem of uh, for Dr. Emmanuel as well. Okay. Yes, yes, his network is having some problem, definitely. Uh, so we would request you to please uh, once again uh, re-enter with this link. Uh, just press exit and once again re-enter with this link. And with this, uh, uh, please wait for your turn again. Uh, we would like to invite uh, with us the next speaker, Dr. Augustine. Please unmute yourself and please. Oh, yeah. Yes. Am I Am I okay. okay. So, Doctor Augustine, if you are there, please request you to unmute. Okay, I think he is also not there. So, we would turn on to next speaker, and I would request to those speakers to wait again for your turn. I would request Egon Zimba to please come forward and express his views. You can Zimba to please come forward and express your views. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, some pronunciation or if there's some mistake with your names, but would request to please come forward and express your views. Yeah. I think there's some problem with the network. Hello? Hello? Hello. Okay. Hello. Can you? Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. Dr. Charles, can you hear Hello. me? Dr. Charles, can you hear me? Oh, this is Dr. Austin, Augustine from Nigeria. Okay. Can Can you hear me? August. Dr. Augustine, can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can okay, hear you. Yes. Okay, okay, I'll make you the next speaker. Uh, welcome to the platform. I'm sorry for the network issues, but I welcome you on this platform uh, of uh, IIU and would request you to share your wonderful views on today's topic of immigration inside and outside Africa, its uh, advantages and inconveniences. Oh, the platform is yours. Please begin with your views. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be part of this very discussion. And uh, the organizers, um, I love you all, all the participants from all the countries. I am very happy to contribute about this very migration. Um, in a special way, I thank uh, the, my brother, um, Ebhoria Charles, and the other people who are involved. Uh, migration, I think, uh, started from the old as old as Bible time, because Abraham had to migrate from the land of Ur to the promised land in Kenna, and that is where he got um, his uh, he before greener pasture, though through direction of God. So it means that migration can be directed by God, or maybe by other circumstances. So migration is very, very important, and it is very, very good. And once you are migrating from one country to the other, it means that you are exporting your potential to another country. So it is very, very important. There are things that some countries cannot do without another person coming from another place. If you look at a medical section now, go to the US, a lot of Nigerians there are helping to solve medical issues. Without migration, they will not um, achieve that. And uh, you know that uh, the highest um, a uh, computer engineer come from Nigeria, though maybe residing in the uh, US, and a lot of things just like that. I myself have been going to many countries, and um, though I have never decided to migrate completely with my family because of uh, uh, I'm in uh, Nigeria, and um, I'm still having uh, some pressures in my country. But if there is any reason for me to migrate, it is even uh, it is uh, required of me to to migrate. But uh, at the same time, we will not fail to talk about the consequences uh, of uh, migration, because I also know that after the battle of maybe the war in Libya, there was a migration of the soldiers into uh, West Africa, 
which escalated the proliferation of uh, ammunition, or maybe establish a kind of uh, 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 insurgency, more especially in Nigeria and uh, in the Benin Republic and the other places in Africa, because the soldiers have their, 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 their master have been killed, so there's nothing they can do. They can migrate, and their, in their immigration, they migrated with a lot of ammunition. And then they came in, and then that is how they generated a lot of uh, terrorists uh, in, in Africa, or maybe in West Africa. So that is part of it. All this very really Al-Shabaab and the rest of them that you are hearing about, most of them are migrants. They migrated from one country to the other. Now in Nigeria, we have uh, such people in Nigeria causing a lot of problem. It is because of migration. A lot of Fulanis, they migrated from nowhere and they came to Nigeria and they are killing people, you know? Despite that, I can say that migration is very, very important. But this, you know, our own in Nigeria, people migrated. There was a time that Ghana had problem and they migrated to Nigeria. They supported, they, they, they helped themselves and they helped Nigeria before their country can settle. Because a lot of things can cause migration. It might be drug, it might be famine, it might be war. So we cannot stop a migration because migration is very, very important in case there is some natural disaster or even man-made disaster that touches the life of those who are not concerned. The best thing is for them to be evacuated. They will migrate to another place. So it is very, very good that um, uh, migration is well established, but we will be very, very careful also in case those that have been migrated are coming to a uh, country that, they, that is not their uh, country of origin with other devilish things like uh, ammunition, like uh, some characters that uh, have not been known or maybe identify with the natives of that very place. So, so migrants can bring some attitudes into another place that might be good um, and, uh, and the attitude that might be bad also. So it is something to be looked into. In migration, I support that there will be migration, but let migration be in a positive mind, the migration that can add values to wherever we are migrating. Thank you very much. May God continue to bless and reward you by. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we would like to thank Dr. Ambassador Dr. Augustine for his wonderful uh, views. And now I would request uh, with us our next co-host also with me, uh, who is Zakenta Armao, to please express views uh, regarding this uh, regarding this topic. All right, please thank you. Can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear me? Can. Yes, yes, we can. All right, thank so, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm in my lovely garden. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll, I'll look at immigration in a different way. For me and, you know, Africa, I, I see that migration is sort of bad for Africa. There are a lot of Africans who do migrate to other countries, like the other speaker said. A lot of African Nigerians, rather, migrate to the US and they're in the medical profession. We also have a lot of people from Malawi who have migrated, whether they're nurses or they're doctors. Now, what is bad about that is that most African countries, if we look at our health system, our health system is short-staffed. It's short-staffed and let's say you travel to the US, it's it's actually a little funny because you find that the person who would have treated you back in your country is the one that has treated you in a place like the US. So, you know, we need to think why rather governments have to really think on why a lot of people migrate. The reason why a lot of Africans migrate is because of the poor environment that is within our countries. And if you really think about it very, very well, you find that those countries where Africans have migrated to are actually doing better. You find that they're doing jobs like cleaning the streets, they are you know, uh, garbage collectors. You know, most of them do these uh, jobs, which 
if they were back home, they wouldn't have done. And, you know, what is sad is that you find educated people, people who had good jobs, leaving those good jobs and then going to Europe or elsewhere so that they can earn a little something. And what is even worse is that a lot of people, when they go there, sometimes they go with a different notion to say, when I go there, I'm going to make a lot of money. But then when they do arrive in those countries, they actually see that the reality is not what they meet there. And you find a lot of people, maybe somebody left in their 20s, you find that that person is there until their 50s. And they cannot come back home because they're not earning enough. Not everyone earns enough. So when people are thinking of migrating to other countries, people should have a plan. They should actually have a plan of giving back to Africa. You know, we hear a lot of talk about how a lot of money is sent back to Africa from relations in Europe or elsewhere. But if you look at the funds that are sent back, those funds are not enough to develop Africa. So our leaders have to put its people first to make sure that people are developed. People are developed education-wise and people are healthy. Because if you do not have an educated uh, society, you're not going to have a healthy, you know, a healthy nation. And, you know, people are going away looking for greener pastures. Africa has got so many resources. The same resources that are taken out of Africa are the same resources which Africa is now importing. So our leaders really need to think deeper. And even those of us who are migrating to other countries, we also need to think a little bit more. Because, as I've said, somebody who migrates may stay many, many years without even thinking about going home. And some of them cannot go home because they have nothing to go back to. They have left a very good job there. They're working McDonald's. They're busy cutting onions. For years and years, they're cutting onions. Now, how does a person like that go back to Africa and maybe take up a job in an office? It's impossible. So our leaders really, really need to think a little bit more, we need to develop Africa. Because as it is, we're developing Europe, we're developing um, North America, and Africa is still lagging behind. Thank you. Well, uh, my co-host, these were the wonderful views that you shared that reality is very, very different from what it has been seen. Uh, so yes, with this wonderful views, we would like to share this platform with another wonderful speaker, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ezekiel. Uh, he's with us and that his camera is now, I think, okay and would we'll try him uh, to be the next speaker. So if Dr. Emmanuel is ready, we will spotlight him and we will ask him to unmute himself and please express his views for uh, for this platform. Okay, again, I think there's some technical issues. Okay. Okay. Um, Zambia uh, is with us, so would request if uh, he can unmute himself and uh, start expressing his views because he has uh, told us that his network that side is not responding well. So is it possible for you to unmute and express your views? No? Okay. Uh, we have with us also a person from Western University, but uh, as he has mentioned his reason, so he won't be able to speak uh, presently at this moment. And yes, again, once again, Dr. Emmanuel, we will try to connect with him. Yes. Okay. Dr. Emmanuel, can you hear us? Then please unmute yourself. Uh, okay, 
we just will wait for one to two seconds more if it's uh, network problems gets fixed up okay. We're continuously sending requests to him, but I think, okay. So, uh, presently we are done with all the speakers and due to uh, lack of, uh, due to network issues, we are not able to hear from uh, three of our speakers. So, uh, if my honorable brother Charles allows, I would like to express my views on this topic. And uh, we will take up the summary. If anyone has some few questions, he may ask to the respected speakers who had expressed uh, their views uh, for uh, for this wonderful topic. So, uh, yes, any questions to any speaker? If someone is having, then please. You may just raise hands if you are unable to unmute yourself. Uh, I'll do it from here. Okay. okay, if anyone would like to ask or express uh, or say something more on this topic or some points. Okay. okay. Uh, so, brother, we would conclude. Well, Karishma, I think uh, uh, I was saying something about the um, migration earlier that uh, <clears throat> so particularly okay. this migration. Can you able to hear me? Uh, yes, Professor Ravindra Rana. Okay, one second, Professor. I would uh, like to uh, spotlight you, so can we we can uh, watch you more clearly. Okay, now yes, you are now on the spotlight. Right. Yes, Professor. Yeah. Thank you, Karishma, for the opportunity. Uh, indeed, uh, I was saying some of the important points. Uh, this creates a lot of turmoil uh, within our occupied side. Uh, I don't know, we may be getting it's a brain drain, and uh, we also say brain gain on the other side, but still, uh, it's creating a lot of, um, uh, lot of um, issues, maybe in Nigeria, or probably in any country, even South Africa also. We got a problem like xenophobia. Uh, people are killing the human beings, so that is what is happening, because they do think that uh, in South Africa particularly, we, we think that, you know, somebody coming from Nigeria, somebody coming from Malawi, somebody coming from Zimbabwe, Tanzania, they are taking our jobs, they are taking our livelihood. So this is kind of, you know, uh, mentally, emotionally, they're driven in a direction where they are trying to think negatively and act negatively. So that is what is happening. Uh, although we do, the migration process need to be structured very well and handled uh, or managed very well, it has got a lot of advantages. Uh, for instance, uh, we have very less skilled people in our African soil when we compare with the other countries. Now, I was uh, listening to one of the external um, foreign affairs ministers of India recently. He was telling that uh, they're going to set up an IIT, uh, Indian Institute of Technology in uh, Zanzibar in Tanzania. So we wanted to help uh, by doing such kind of things. There are a lot of Indian companies also operating. Chinese companies are also being in an operation. And so while we are working together hand in hand with other nationals, we also learn something from them. Of course, there are two sides. Every coin has got two sides, a head and the tail. And the migration also, it has got advantage one side and the disadvantage on the other side. So we need to you know, compare and contrast which one is more for us? I know, I know our bro brothers and sisters in Africa, they have been overexploited over a period of time. So in fact, this migration is trying to harm them more than, the, than helping them. So because African, true Africans need to reap the benefits of this migration. Now, if somebody leaves African continent for, the, for some livelihood, maybe to ESA or to UK or elsewhere, Maybe they are struggling in the beginning, but they are doing very well. And the, many of them, they become professionals and many of them become absolutely competent uh, scientists and experts. In fact, the internet was been invented by our Indian brothers or our Nigerian brothers in 1960s. So that is possible only with the migration. There are a lot of Indian guys who migrated like Amitya Kumar Sain or maybe Abhijit uh, Benerjee 
and all these guys, they got the Nobel Prize when they are outside the country. So migration does help not only the nations, but also the individuals. So we do have, uh, but we need to structure it very well because in the name of migration, Africa has been looted actually. Africa is not getting a lot of benefits. Rather, it is being used. So that needs to be you know, looked at seriously. And then the African leadership need to uh, prepare some kind of strategies where the migration or immigration process could help the African side and the African continent. So that is what I would like to add here. Thank you very much, uh, Karishma, for that question. Yes, uh, thank you. Your each and every views are very exact up to the point and very, very much correct. Uh, so I would like to express some of the views as uh, presently no speaker is left. So I would like to take this platform. Uh, so uh, we have to today's topic as uh, you know, immigration inside and uh, outside uh, Africa, as well as in other countries, its advantages and uh, inconveniences. I don't know much of the uh, immigration process of Africa because each country plays a very, very different role uh, into their immigration paths. But, uh, you know, uh, in India, there is now uh, recently an act announced that a CAA, Citizen Commitment Act, and everybody is aware because that is a nationalized use by uh, Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, that CAA. And uh, this is also inviting immigrations uh, from, you know, different uh, countries like Pakistan, Nepal and all. And uh, people are very happy like those who are refugees and all have not got the identity in Pakistan, Nepal or some other countries. They would be getting a particular identity or citizenship in our country, India. Uh, so, you know, each and every person is happy. And it's all. And also immigration is one such type that uh, definitely, pro uh, you know, invites other countries' talent to be a part of their country. And uh, also it would be providing very, very new, new opportunities for the youngsters and all. But yes, as uh, I heard the views of uh, Jacinta Amo that, uh, you know, uh, reality is very, very different from what it has been seen. So yes, many of the you know youngsters and all in the in the sake of earning money, they leave family and they take very hasty decisions and they come in the go. Oh, of course, the world is trying to develop a uh, you know a very Vasudev Kutumkam uh, type of feelings that is the whole world as family. But uh, also there are many of the disadvantages nowadays. Terrorism is also uh, getting high at its peak. So immigration. Uh, if we do, uh, do not have its proper structure, as you said, then it will also increase terrorism in the countries. And already we are facing such problems in different parts of country. So, yes, it has to be, uh, you know, uh, having much of the rules and it would uh, it should be definitely structured. And then we should be allowing the other people's, of, of course, we are welcoming other people's talent into our country. And also there is one little bit of, of this advantage that local people won't be uh, getting advantages than the people coming from the outside because if any countries are you know inviting talents from outside then local peoples are uh, the persons who are getting least benefited and uh, you know local peoples will, will be you know striving with the jobs and all and they would be struggling more because everyone would be preferring uh, you know, the talents from outside who are more and more qualified and experienced. And this is little the disadvantages for the local persons residing in that country. So, yes, definitely immigration has to be structured and all the things and the uh, talents available in the present country should not be encouraging outside talents. But yes, the things which are not into a country, uh, they should definitely invite some uh, immigrants uh, to, you know, develop uh, that part into their country. So I feel uh, that, uh, yes, it has an uh, advantage and a disadvantage both. And every such thing has both pros and cons. Uh, but yes, uh, if it can be more structured and more portable process, then uh, we can enjoy the immigrants and also welcome with the open hearted to all the immigrants to our country too. And uh, with this, I think there's no speaker left if uh, Dr. Emmanuel uh, is there and if his network is, you know, responding, then we would take him as a speaker. Otherwise, would request to uh, conclude because uh, I think some of the network issues are going on. Everybody, yes, okay, he is there with us. And yes, now the proper network is also there with him, I suppose. So, Dr. Emmanuel, yeah. 
Dr. Emmanuel he is trying continuously and uh, three to four times he has tried, but yes, uh, unfortunately, network okay. is not working. Yes. Uh, uh, am I no, you are not properly audible, Dr. Emmanuel, as we call. You are not properly audible. There is a uh, lots of disturbances with your network. Yeah. I think my network is still very bad. My network is very bad. Yes, no problem. Yeah, uh, it's always. Yeah, so I just to. to... Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, so that because of what is working. Um, very I'll just a uh, be brief because uh, we have got people outside of Africa. They are now in India. Uh, there are a number of reasons why people are going out. Uh, I'll just ask about a few things like Africa. Because Africa, if we look into it, is very resourceful. Africa is rich itself. And also Africa got resources that make Africa to become rich. But we are not like the available resources that we have in Africa. Because if we look at the fact that we have got fresh water, we have got forests, we have got in Africa. But unfortunately, not using the property. We have got the uh, mines here, the minerals. We have these things here. We have got the uh, Africa in a very high that our people here are going outside Africa looking for jobs, looking for employment. If we start going out in Africa, using our water, I China. Using a verb water, we produce enough for ourselves. We can live for ourselves. We need to become very active. So now we need to become very active using the resources that are available. Because if we just look at the resources that we have, we will keep being poor till forever. Because if we uh, stand up and say, okay, here we are, let's see what we have to this is very potential. If we use this, it will be to benefit our country. If you look at it, in Africa, most of the people we have got many people unfortunately, they are not working towards uh, uh, the Africa. Most of them are in Africa. The, the, the knowledge, the skills that they have a lot of in America are Africans. Most of people, most of the people who are working in Britain, who are working in Germany, are Africans. They are making lots of things. They are making lots of things. They are making lots of things. They are making And then start looking at ourselves. And then start looking at our resources. And find out how best we can use them. How best we can utilize the resources that are available. The water. The federal land the that we have. We, Africa is very rich, but it's unfortunate that we are poor and our people are running out to Europe we have to America, because we are very rich. 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 We are very rich.
Okay. Uh, I think again there is a problem with uh, Dr. Emmanuel uh, Ezekiel's network. But whatever we were able to hear from him was uh, very wonderful news. And thank you, Dr. Emmanuel Ezekiel, uh, for being with us. And sorry, we couldn't hear you very properly. But yes, uh, in the mid also, you were having your wonderful views and we would like to invite you again uh, for our next conference too. And also all the speakers, uh, as you have participated today, uh, we would also like you uh, to be into the same participation and the energy and the spirit uh, into the next conference also, which would be organized by IIU and our Honorable Dr. Professor Charles Iboria. Uh, soon we will also be having some other conferences uh, which Dr. Charles would be inviting you. So I request all uh, to participate into such wonderful topics and uh, share your views and knowledge with us. And this I would request uh, my beautiful host, uh, Armina Rescue, to please uh, come again on the platform and handle this platform. Uh, thank you all for being with us. And Armina, over to you. Uh, thank you, my dear Karishma. Um, I am happy to be and to support always uh, our team IAU Africa, and I'm proud of you all. Congratulations for the topic. Congratulations for all the Hello, speakers. Hello, Dr. Karishma. Thank you very much Did you hear for me? this great opportunity. Thank you all. Okay, I will let Sir Charles. I have my microphone closed, I think. <laughs> Sir Charles, you want to say something? Or shall I continue? Dr. Okay, Karishma, I, I know you have tried a okay. lot. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. You have been able to showcase. Uh... Thank you. Uh, I would always thank like you. to thank you for trusting me and believing me. And also thank you all to, you know, participating and uh, you know uh, wonderfully and energetically into this platform as well as to Armina and uh, our co-host Fatima uh, and Jen Jenica for uh, being with, with us into this platform and uh, uh, you know for cooperating it so well so thank you thanks to the entire platform of IRU and uh, special to Dr. Charles for having me here thank you. Thank you very I much, Dr. Again. Karishma. I appreciate you. And I pray that God will go to stretching you. I thank God for everybody. Actually, we can see from the summary of what you have been saying so far, we can see that immigration is, uh, is uh, bad. And we can also see that immigration is uh, not bad. And uh, I want you to know that illegal immigration is bad. Illegal. Look at that. Illegal. Whereby you are not authorized. Whereby you have, you have not been able to document your documents. You have not been able to do the right thing. Uh, hey, that is where it's bad. And on uncontrolled legal immigration is bad. Uncontrolled legal immigration is bad. Look at that. And also, control and sustainable legal immigration of people who want to integrate and contribute is good. Look at that. You want to go there to do good things. You want to at least showcase your talent. It's very good. But in a situation whereby you want to go there to get to 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 make some fraudulent acts or do all those things that are mysterious, all those bad things, that is where it's not good. Your purpose of going to stay in a particular place must be good. And also you must respect yourself. You know where you are coming from. Not to go there and contribute a nuisance, trying to cause a lot of havoc. To that country and before you know you are being deported that is where it's bad it's good we look we love good things we love fine things we want to appreciate good things but at the same time when we are trying to get good things let us get good in the right way let us do the right thing that is why we appreciate people to migrate yes you are going there for a purpose that purpose is to do the right thing to have a sustainable environment to do the right thing and create impact legacy that is where we appreciate you but whereby you are going there to dupe or to cause nuisance or to contribute or do fraudulent acts, that is where we will not recognize it. And before I still con uh, conclude, I think that we have some other speakers there. Like Rachel is there. I can see Rachel. I can see uh, the man from Zimbabwe. Uh, 
Mulaya, I can see him there. Can we call these people so that they can give their input before I now conclude? Dr. Rachel, can you please speak? Bring Good morning, voice. everyone. Don't can you hear me? Out. Good morning. Can you guys hear, hear you loud? Oh, okay, thank you. We can hear you. Good morning, dear. Good morning, dear excellencies. Good morning, all my fellow Africans working really to help and educate our society. I'm really happy to be able to join today's meeting. What I want to say about immigration in Africa is that this situation is something that cannot be solved without going to the roots. And the roots is that most of our countries are not offering the young people what they really, really need in terms of employment, in terms of guarantee when it comes to their future. And this is the main issue with immigration. I have a chance to be also living in Canada. So, and I see how the regulations accepting people from Africa is uh, sometimes more strict than other countries. For example, it took us four years to be able to immigrate here. But for some countries, like in Europe, like the people would take six months, maximum eight months to come to Canada. Why is it like that? The only reason that I see here is that we are missing something, not on a personal level when it comes to our young people, but it's on a government, uh, it's on a high level, which is uh, about the government, the way that the politics that they are using with other countries. Because why would they ask somebody from Africa, from Niger Nigeria, from Ethiopia, from other countries there to spend four years, three years before coming here and for other countries, they're just, you know, in three months, six months, they are already here. If you see the list of documents that they are asking when somebody is coming from Africa, it's a lot. Twice what they're asking from other countries. And this is like our political people have to be able to have that partnership because we need each other. African people need to come here to go to America, to UK, to study things go back and develop our countries. But if our president, our political people are not working at that level to have very good and strong relationship with these developed countries to allow young people to come, is also an issue that is not helping. And what young people do as a solution, they will go through the sea or they will use some ways that are not safe for them because they want to come, but they don't know how to come because they are not meeting all the requirements, the long list of documents and the amount of money that is required. So I believe to solve this issue, we must, we must go to the roots. We must work with our government. And it could be through the NGOs trying to really, you know, encourage and explain the true importance of that by uh, that relationship between our government and other government to facilitate. For example, when I take countries like East, especially for China, they just send people here to study, to do things, but they know they're not staying here. They're coming to learn and they're going back to develop their countries. But it's because the government is involved in working and getting scholarships and all those things for the young student already in school. So this is what we need to be working on to really help our young people coming in the right way because they are smart, they can learn, they can do many things, but they don't know the way. So today I just wanna say on a personal level, what can we do? Some of us are working with NGOs, some are working on universities, Everybody can do something at his level to try to encourage, to try to explain, you know, 
and sensitize other people about how to make this easy for our immigration in Africa. Because telling that the young people should stay there is not the solution. But how they should come is by facilitating the relationship between our countries and these developed countries so that they will facilitate it and allow young people to come and learn new skills that would be beneficial for the whole Africa. Thank you. I don't want to take much of your time. Sorry, it's morning in my place. So I know you guys have been here for a while. I saw the messages. Some of them were three, 2, 2 a.m. of my time. So I don't want to take much time again. But I just want to say thank you to Prof. Shah for giving me the word. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you, for making this happen. Thank you. Ambassador Sidani, can you can we hear from you? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rachel. You're welcome. Ambassador Sidani. Uh, Dr. Charles and uh, uh, Honorable Arlena, uh, we have with us, having us uh, one of the speakers, KYTBN, with us. So, uh, can we request him to please come and express his views? Can we, can we hear from Ambassador Tidani? <laughs> Ambassador yeah. Ditani, can we hear from you? Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Well, given the floor, you can speak. Ambassador Titani, you can speak now. Okay. I know your network is bad. Okay. Um, the woman Hello. Up, you know, Hello. Council president of IIU. I mean, uh, Hello. Yeah, you can talk Please, now. Please, do you, you understand me? Okay. You can speak now. So, okay. So, I'm here this evening uh, here. Uh, first of all, I greet uh, all member uh, participants, uh, our uh, dear responsible of uh, IU uh, in the different countries, uh, in the different continents. So uh, I think and to congratulate uh, all the participants here concerning the theme, choose uh, concerning the immigration accent in Africa, uh, advantage and consequences. Uh, for the, uh, uh, I would to, to like to summary concern the theme uh, mm -hmm. at this moment. So uh, immigration is the moving, moving uh, of youth 
with a different uh, population uh, in Africa and to look for the uh, reason the resource and the benefits and concern uh, is uh, life. And that is why uh, the, movement, the moving is provocate uh, the great uh, moving and the um, travel of uh, concern the youth and the different uh, person young uh, to the new place and the new uh, and the other countries and to become uh, concern the team and to be a rich uh, personally and, the, and to help uh, the different family in Africa. And so immigration have many, many uh, consequences. Uh, why? I give a reason concern the immigration uh, above the consequences because the consequences is perceptive as the advantage. For example, uh, you see the many, many youths in Africa and to be exposed concern the, the, the question of disease and the, 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 the place of immigration. For example, the disease and, and the violence uh, or, or racism uh, and the discrimination uh, and the countries reserve the, the, the young, displaced young. For example, uh, in, in, for example, excuse me, uh, you, you, you remark the situation in North Africa. For example, uh, many peoples, many peoples, young Africa move uh, and to where concern the, the uh, to where uh, and, and to travel in concern the immigration to Spain, the Spain, Italy, and Spain, Italy, and in general, Europeans. In Europa, please, in Europa, uh, many, many youth uh, meet the many problems concerning the, the, the question of uh, the place, uh, uh, the place exposed the different uh, 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 manipulation of the different uh, 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 citizens of the different countries. So uh, in Algeria, because Algeria is the uh, 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 place of immigration in Africa to where the Spain in Italy. Uh, so, uh, for example, we many, 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 many young African did during the moving concerning immigration to where Europa. Uh, for example, the, the, the young are exposed against by the uh, uh, politic, uh, the immigration political, because the immigration political is a very, very, very strategy uh, concerning the countries of receive. The country of receive, uh, 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 there are many, many concerning the, 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 the receive, the, the, the different uh, immigrants concern the place of uh, sleeping concern the place of uh, uh, the pharmaceutical place and to and to support and to help the young Africa in immigration. For example, uh, yeah, the young, for example, for me, the young Burkina Burkina Bay, uh, go to Algeria to Tunisia in South Africa uh, without now person uh, and the reserve place. That is the problems. And uh, for example, I give you again the, the advantage of immigration in Africa outside South. For example, the advantage uh, are many, many, many concerned with different plan. And uh, the immigration to, to, to send some money to the family and to, to help the family concerned the, uh, the resource uh, uh, to 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 wear to resource to 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 earth and to wins uh, the immigration young Af immigration in Africa contribute to build the hospital 
for the family and the village. It contributes uh, to get to accompany the group, the equip of women concerned the gardening garden. The gardening garden, it contributes uh, to accompany the women in our uh, different uh, village and our different countries. That is the uh, immigration in uh, South Africa is the uh, best uh, at this moment because the young immigrants uh, thinks concern the question of social development and uh, uh, to the uh, state of place because uh, the young uh, the young uh, immigrant to contribute for the question of uh, uh, the development and project and to 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 create and to provide concern the question of uh, financial and economic for our population. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Char Ebura, uh, concerning the meeting today. Uh, uh, as I, I am invited uh, to be a part of the participants today. Thank you. So, excuse me, uh, I had a small problem of network. Uh, that is why uh, I am uh, I am late uh, to to to, to coming. Thank you very much. I'm seeing Ambassador Muliya. Can you can we hear your view, Ambassador Muliya? Ambassador Muliya, can we hear your view? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, if it's not there, uh, can our women uh, entrepreneur council president, Papa Ayu, Ambassador Emina, give us a vote of thanks and at the same time give us one or two things so as to appreciate us and appreciate our Ayu. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am happy to be here with you all. Uh, and uh, it's always a pleasure to support uh, uh, my dear team, IAU Africa. Uh, first and foremost, there is nothing in this world that prepare you for immigration. I think you can read a lot of information before and you can document what you should do to make your first day, weeks, month, easier or year, let's say like this. But um, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that everything will necessarily be perfect. There are a lot of things over which you have um, no control or factors that you cannot take into account. And a lot depends on the personal motivation maybe for immigration and the strength of character of each one. Um, the fact that someone leaves everything behind and uh, start in other realms from scratch means from a uh, mere defined, uh, definitive move, a total paradigm shift in that person's life, a decision made after um, a difficult process of analyze maybe. Uh, and um, I think it's an act of courage. It's an act of courage. Many of us um, think we are just simple people with a simple life uh, and, uh, um, and even simple fate, but it's not like that. Everyone is unique and lives their lives completely differently. Even we don't um, always see it. We are subjected to test every day in which we have um, to choose all the time. And this is how life defines us, shape our future according to our choice. And I think, I think at the end of all, our house is there where is our heart. Our house is there where we are happy. Congratulations for this initiative. For our great vice chancellor, country director of Nigeria, the head of Africa continent, our honorable professor, Dr. Chap General Eborio Shilo Charles, and to the great team IAU Africa. I was really <clears throat> deeply impressed by your speeches. I was happy to see uh, 
my old friends, uh, and, uh, Professor Dr. Ravinder, also here. Um, uh, that uh, means that this event, this uh, conference, spiritual conference, unite us. We meet here, we meet together, we uh, share our knowledge. It's an, um, a, we can say that it's change of experience. And I want to express also my sincere gratitude to entire IIU team because behind of all events, it's a work of team, to Mr. Piyush Pandit uh, for um, the support and for this great platform and uh, for all the respected members of the audience for uh, your support, for your passions to be with us today. Again, I will say education has not borders. It unites us. Education is a bridge between different corners of the world, between the soul. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you very much. God bless you, my sister. May God continue to give you the grace to continue to do the work you are doing. You are doing a good work in IIU and God, God will continue to lift you and promote you. You have been a nice sister and a nice uh, woman Women president, may God come to strengthen you. The office that God has fixed into you, you will use it in a good way and you will have the reward at the end of the period. Thank you very much. I would love our brother, who is also very one of my, I will call him my mentor. He's a very nice brother, Professor Ravida. In respect of the death of the mother, he is always with us. And I pray that God will come to give you good health of mind and body. The number of years you will spend, God will make it to be. That, that number of years, no one will kill you. No one will shorten your life. God will come to promote you and expand your knowledge. Thank you very much, Professor Ravida. May God come to give you the grace to do his work. Thank you very much. I want you to give us a closing prayer. Thank you, and I appreciate everybody. Uh, my sister, Dr. Karishma, thank you very much for coming to help us out. Our moderators who will feast, they're supposed to be here, but they gave me an excuse. That's why I had to call you to come and assist us. You keep on assisting us. I was surprised not to see our sister, Fatima, uh, Ambassador Fatima. I expect her to be here, but I don't know why she was out. But God will come to strengthen her. So, my brother, give us closing prayer and say one or two things. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, my brother Charles, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Indeed, uh, it's a honor for me to give this closing prayer on behalf of my IAU and on behalf of our African uh, chapter. Uh, it's indeed uh, it's a God's uh, a plan that we planned this particular program, and uh, may the God be with us, with our families. My mother passed away twenty second of February. She is always there with us in our hearts, in our uh, prayers, in our everywhere where we go. So just like that, all the God is always protecting us, and let the God take control of our lives. Let the God guide us and uh, show us the direction and probably develop the insights, the skill, the dexterity that all our people from different parts of the world, they need to get that spirit. So uh, I would like to thank uh, the IAU and the conference uh, team that uh, particularly we have Charles, our Vice Chancellor, and Ermina, uh, and uh, Tidiane, Karishma, and also Jacinta, and all of our speakers, Fatima, and moderators, so uh, Dr. Emmanuel and everybody, thanks, and let God protect all of us. Let God Amen. protect our family members. And uh, with these few words, I would like to say thanks again, and God bless every one of us, and me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, IAU. Thank you for your good support. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Till next month, we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Charles. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a very nice day. Thank you. Same, same. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, okay. Yeah.